Hello and welcome to this video on the advantages and limitations of structural equation modeling. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays I usually present an analysis in the M Plus software and on Thursdays I talk about more general issues in multivariate statistical analysis including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level analysis and latent class modeling. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I teach for Quantfish. In this video, I want to discuss the advantages and limitations of structural equation modeling. And I'm going to begin with the advantages. What is the first or most important advantage of using structural equation modeling with latent variables in my view. It is the fact that with structural equation modeling and factor analysis we obtain a correction for measurement error. And we know that most of the measurements that we use in the social sciences such as test scores, questionnaire scores, ratings, observations do contain a non-zero amount of measurement error variance in the score. So some of the variability between people in the scores can simply be explained by random measurement error. And so therefore, one of our goals is to separate measurement error variance from true score variance, meaning true differences between people. We're really interested in determining the true variance in the uh, scores rather than error variance. And so structural equation modeling and factor analysis allows us to separate measurement error from true score variance by introducing latent variables, latent factors that are then by definition free of measurement error. And so why is this important? It's important because the accuracy of our uh, path coefficients correlations and their standard errors is affected by measurement errors. So for example, when we look at correlations between observed variables that are not perfectly reliable, that do contain measurement error, then those correlations represent underestimates of the true score correlations. We know that from Spearman's correction for attenuation from classical test theory, which um, shows that in a formula that we can correct our observed correlations for random measurement error if we know the reliabilities of the variables. And so in factor analysis and SEM, that correction is built into the model, so we don't need to apply a correction for attenuation by hand. It is part of our measurement model in structural equation models, and so it does that simultaneously for all variables for which we have multiple indicators, so it's very practical. Related to this point of correcting for measurement error is the fact that as a byproduct of the analysis we obtain estimates of the reliabilities of the indicator so we can then learn something about the psychometric properties of our scales or items or other measurements to see how reliable they are and we get this built-in correction of regression coefficients and correlation coefficients in the structural model so that our inference that are uh, uh, um, about relationships between constructs is less biased. So that's to so say one key advantage is that correction for measurement error that leads to less biased results when we estimate path coefficients, regression coefficients, correlation coefficients, when we test them for significance, then measurement error is taken into account. And so that distinguishes SEM from regression analysis, from path analysis with observed variables, from analysis of variance and other methods that use exclusively observed variables or manifest variables as we say in the jargon of structural equation modeling. Another advantage is that this framework allows us to estimate models that are quite complex, which contain many variables, which allow us to look at multiple exogenous or independent variables, multiple so-called mediator variables that are in between uh, sets of variables and multiple outcome variables at the same time. So we can look at complex direct and indirect paths in these models. We can have 
linear effects, non-linear effects, interactive effects, all the kinds of things that you could look at in a regression model as well. You can use dummy variables for categorical um, uh, variables as that are exogenous variables. And so it's a very flexible framework for modeling complex relationships between um, sets of variables. And it allows us to rigorously test our models. Typically in structural equation modeling, we have so-called over-identified models, meaning models that imply testable restrictions for the observed covariance and or mean structure of the variables. And so then models can be falsified, meaning they could be rejected according to a chi-square test of model fit. And so therefore, SEM allows us to rigorously test our theories by coming up with a theoretical model, fitting it to observed data, and then testing it with a chi-square test of model fit to see if the model is acceptable or not, if the, or if the model has to be rejected. And also we can compare different models statistically. If we have competing models that are derived from our theory, then we can compare those statistically. For example, we can conduct nested model comparisons using chi-square difference test. We can also compare non-nested models in structural equation modeling with uh, specific types of fit indices. So that's also an advantage that we have more testing ability than for conventional statistical models such as regression analysis where we have saturated models and where we can look at R squared and we can look at parameter estimates but we cannot reject a model um, based on overall model fit statistics. Also, one uh, positive aspect of structural equation modeling and factor analysis is that it is very easy to include missing data in the analysis. We typically use maximum likelihood estimation for continuous variables in SEM and factor analysis. And with maximum likelihood estimation, we can use so-called full information, maximum likelihood with missing data, where all available data can be included in the analysis so we don't have to use multiple imputation for example or some other method for addressing missing data we can just simply um, use our data set as is with the missing scores and then with full information maximum likelihood we will extract the maximum amount of data and that is available we can include auxiliary variables in the analysis that are correlated with missing scores or with our outcome variables and so it's very easy to handle missing data in the SEM and factor analysis frameworks. Furthermore the framework of structural equation modeling is extremely flexible and allows us to address a variety of data structures that can be quite complex where other types of methods would be very limited. So for example, regression analysis or analysis of variance. With SEM, we can model, for example, also longitudinal data. And I will um, address this um, in more detail on the next slide here. So what are extensions? For example, we can also look at multiple groups like we would in, for example, analysis of variance when we want to conduct group comparisons, for example, males and females, experimental groups and control groups, or cross-cultural comparisons. And one advantage uh, of SEM with regard to group comparisons is that SEM allows us to test for measurement equivalence or measurement invariance, as we also say, formally, which we cannot do when we run an analysis of variance with multiple groups, where we simply assume that the measurement structure is the same across groups and that the scores are comparable. In SEM, we can formally test whether the indicators of the latent factors that we want to compare have the same loadings, the same intercepts, maybe the same error variances across groups. And so therefore we can ensure that the latent variables are measured on the same scale with the same origin and units of measurement. And so that is something that can be formally tested when using multi-group analysis in SEM. So that involves measurement equivalence testing. Again, that's a formal test where we can use chi-square tests, chi-square difference tests to see whether uh, and which level of measurement equivalence holds across groups. 
Also, I already mentioned longitudinal models, so structural equation modeling can be used for a variety of um, longitudinal analyses. Most prominent perhaps are latent growth curve models for which you can also find videos on this channel. There's a whole playlist on latent growth curve models. There are also latent change score models. There are latent state trait models, latent autoregressive cross lag models. There are models for intensive longitudinal data that can be specified within the structural equation modeling framework. So you have many, many approaches available for handling longitudinal or repeated measures data within the SEM framework. And again, the advantage there is that you can account for measurement errors. So problems like regression to the mean, for example, are reduced with longitudinal data. You have especially, or you can have especially uh, a large trouble when you have measurement error, because for example, when you look at change scores over time, different scores, then those would be especially affected by measurement error when you used, when you use only observed variables, whereas, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, with latent variables, you correct for measurement error and you have less of a problem when you look at, for example, latent change score models or latent different score variables, which can be defined within the framework of SEM and factor analysis. SEM can also be applied to dyadic data, so data from husband and wives, for example, or other diets. It can be used for um, multiple rater data, for example, when you have interchangeable raters that all rate a certain construct or multiple constructs, for example, multiple interchangeable or randomly selected customers that rate products or companies, then you can analyze this as well with um, multi-level SEM, for example. So the SEM approach can be combined with multi-level modeling to um, address nested data structures. And there are also so-called mixture distribution SEM models that combine the idea of structural equation modeling with the idea of latent class modeling so that we can find and analyze uh, un previously unknown subgroups of participants that differ with regard to parameter values. For example, there are growth mixture models where we can identify different growth trajectories, subgroups who show different trajectories, for example, groups that change over time versus groups that do not change over time. And so this has a lot of flexibility, the SEM approach for handling different kinds of data structures. And again, please feel free to check out more videos on this channel for extensions. Also take a look at the videos and the workshops that I offer through Quantfish on various techniques. Um, in the SEM framework with M+, we also offer workshops with R and Lavan that um, illustrate how to apply different SEM techniques in statistical software. What are the limitations of structural equation modeling? First of all, it's a more complex type of statistical analysis, and so reporting the results may be more complicated, especially if your audience is not familiar with the concept of latent variables, the idea of structural equation modeling, that you have multiple indicators, and so on. So then it could be um, more complicated to publish your results, to um, present your results to, to the audience that you want to reach. And also related to this issue is that since it's a more complex technique, you need relatively large samples. So meaning larger samples than what you would typically need for analysis of variance or regression analysis, where you have fewer variables, where you don't have latent variables, you don't have complex uh, sets of parameters to estimate. And so typically we need several hundred cases for our structural equation models in order to feel comfortable with the sample size. So that is definitely a practical limitation when you do not have access to um, several hundred cases, then you may opt for simpler statistical analyses. Also, since the analysis is more complex, more can go wrong. So with regression analysis and ANOVA, we typically, for example, don't run into convergence problems. We could, if we have, for example, multicollinearity problems, there could be 
estimation issues also with the multiple regression model but typically um, it's pretty easy to resolve whereas with SEM you can run into problems where you don't know what to do so to say especially when you're new to the analysis you might get the message from a program this model is not identified or this model didn't converge or this model yielded improper parameter estimates meaning negative variance estimates and so this is often very puzzling for novices uh, who start with structural equation modeling and again i have some videos on this channel that deal with troubleshooting with estimation problems in sem and help you figure out why you might have gotten an improper solution or a convergence problem so check that out as well and so but in general so say it can be more frustrating to estimate sem models there's a uh, learning curve there where at the beginning when you're not familiar with these models you can make mistakes that lead to estimation problems that then perhaps are um, confusing and frustrating and finally with um, one of the advantages that i mentioned with sem is that you can do model testing rigorous testing of a model but that comes with the downside that oftentimes model don't fit and again especially when you are new to this type of analysis then oftentimes um, people specify models that are too restrictive that don't fit well and then it frustrates people because they don't know why does my model not fit what can I do about it I have some videos on this channel that address the issue of misfit why does my SEM not fit and what can I do about it so check that out if that's an issue for you but again this is something that can be frustrating when you don't know okay why does my model not fit how can I modify it because when you have model misfit that can res that could result in biased parameter estimates biased standard errors and incorrect statistical inference then defeating the purpose of using this analysis which um, the where so say the goal is to have less biased results and correct for measurement error but if your model doesn't fit then the model may not be may not do a good job representing your data and giving you proper results i hope you found this video useful to learn more about the pros and cons of structural equation modeling if you did then please hit the like button check out the description for additional resources don't forget to subscribe to this channel and i'll see you next time